Namaste. This is David Hawthorne at astroview.com. Today is the 27th of February, 2017. The following is the Vedic astrology reading for Princess Grace Kelly, based on the 12th of November, 1929, 5.31 a.m. in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. Now, using systems approach to Vedic astrology, systems approach to interpreting horoscopes, we see that if we looked at east on the horizon at the time of birth, the seventh sign of the zodiac was ascending or rising in the first house. This is a Libra rising sign ruled by Venus. Libra is an air sign and a movable sign. Air sign persons are quite intelligent. Movable sign persons are not afraid to go places and do things. Now, Libra is ruled by Venus, and Venus could have gone into any of the 12 houses. It went into the first house, remained in the first house in Libra. This is such a significant position. When a planet is in its own multricone sign in the first house, or in any kendra, the four kendras, then it becomes a panch maha purush yoga. So panch means five, maha means great. So this is one of the five great yogas of life. This one's called Malav Yog. So clearly it gave her this tremendous beauty and deep appreciation for the fine arts, the performing arts, and the healing arts. She was a world-famous actress who won an Academy Award and some Golden Globes, that type of thing. Venus is also connected with entertainment, beauty, fashion, design, it's a very affluent planet, and it's a Panch Mahapurush Yoga, one of the famous yogas. She also had Mercury in the first house, which is very good for communications, and Mercury rules the twelfth house of foreign lands, so it connects her with foreign lands. She left USA and moved to Monaco. K2 in the first house gives deep spiritual progress in life. She actually started a lot of uh, organizations later in life to help other people. Philanthropic person. And of course, Sun in the first house. Sun is a royal planet. So she marries the prince of Monaco and becomes a princess. In the second house, we have the eight sign Scorpio. This is Mars in the house of wealth, status, and speech. Mars rules the seventh house of marriage. Seventh house is also comforts living abroad in the house of wealth and status. Mars in the second house gave her very direct and courageous speech. And it gave her wealth and status connected with her husband. In the third house, we have the ninth sign, Sagittarius, and this is Saturn in the third house. Saturn for Libra will never cause harm. Saturn in the third house makes one very conservative in their approach to life. She knew how to measure her words. This is the house of communications. Saturn rules the fifth house of children and it's in the third house of independence so it gave her very independent children. Fourth house, 10 sign Capricorn. Fifth house, 11 sign Aquarius. So Saturn ruling her mind, ruling her education, ruling her children is in the house of independence and self-initiatives. Now Moon rules his 10th house of professional life. And Moon, of course, is the public and public favor. This is called a waxing moon. It's pulling away from the sun. and has a 5-9 relationship with the sun makes her very resourceful so it does give public favor but moon ruling the house of career in the fifth house connects her with children and she left her acting career her very famous acting career to raise her three children
sixth house, twelfth sign Pisces, seventh house, first sign Aries. So this is Rahu, the northern node of the moon, in the seventh house. So Rahu can give a spouse, this is the house of marriage, so it can give her a spouse who is highly ambitious, charismatic, persuasive, who has magnetic personality. And Rahu can be connected with foreign lands. So she marries somebody from a foreign land. In the eighth house, we have the second sign, Taurus, ruled by Jupiter. Excuse me, this is the eighth house of Taurus, and Jupiter's in the eighth, eighth house. So this connects the third house with the eighth house. Third house is a person's self-initiatives, mental development, self-expression, independence, and entrepreneurial activities. And it's in the house of research, and language, even mystical experiences and occult knowledge. But this does make her husband and children vulnerable, Jupiter's husband and children. So in essence, they were vulnerable. The husband lost his wife and the children lost their mother. In the ninth house, the third sign, Gemini. Tenth house, fourth sign, Cancer, ruled by the moon. 11th house, 5th sign, Leo, ruled by the sun. So the sun ruling income and friendships is in the first house of self. And sun is a royal planet. So it brings royal income to her. It brings royal friendships to her. And in the 12th house, we have the 6th sign, Virgo, ruled by Mercury. 12th house is Mokshistan, the house of spirituality and enlightenment. But it's also connected with ashrams, institutional life, and foreign lands. It's also connected with losses and expenses and end of life. So Mercury ruling foreign lands is in the first house of self. Now when we go a little deeper into the chart, what we see is that Sun is in its debilitation sign, so it becomes weak. And that can cause some issues with her cardiovascular system. Her heart. She apparently had a stroke while driving her car. Moon also is connected with the heart. It's weak in old age degrees. There are 30 degrees in a sign. Any planet past 25 degrees is old age and weak. So moon is weak and sun is at 26 degrees weak. Moon is codependent on the strength of Saturn because it's in the multricone sign for Saturn. And Saturn is in the multricone sign for Jupiter, which is in the house of death. Accidents and death-like experiences. So sun and moon are absolutely weak in this chart, ruling the heart, stomach, digestion, blood, bones, and immune system. Saturn is known as Ayush Karaka, significator for longevity. And it's weak because the landlord, Jupiter, is placed in the eighth house of accidents and death-like experiences. So she had an accident and death-like experience. Now, Mercury rules the 12th house of foreign lands, and it's actually afflicted by both Rahu and Ketu. The north and south nodes of the moon, which are mathematical ecliptic points in the zodiac. They cause the eclipse of the sun and the moon every year since the beginning of time. So we have to manage them in any chart. Now, if planets are not within five degrees of each other by conjunction or aspect, there's no impact. So, Ra and Ketu are not bothering Venus, this Panch Mahapurusha Yoga. They're not even bothering Sun. And Ketu's fifth, seventh, and ninth aspects are causing no trouble to other planets. Rahu's fifth, seventh, and ninth aspect are causing no trouble to other planets. But both are within two degrees, two and a half degrees of Mercury, ruling foreign lands. 
generally when I have a client from a foreign land, who was born in a foreign land, from USA, if the 12th ruler is afflicted, it is not ideal for them to live abroad. So in this case, it turned out that living abroad was life-threatening. It caused her death. Mercury for Libra is actually the most malefic planet. Its multra consign is Virgo, falling in the 12th house, a on Baba. Of these 12 houses, nine are favorable. The first, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, ninth, tenth, and eleventh. Those are favorable houses. But three houses are not favorable, the sixth, eighth, and twelfth. Planets going into the 6th, 8th, or 12th become weak. So Jupiter is weak. It rules husband, children, liver, gallbladder, and hips. It rules younger siblings and self-initiatives. So this did cause some vulnerability and death-like experiences for her husband and children. The sixth house ruler does not contain a multricone sign. The eighth house does not contain a multricone sign. So these two rulers are not causing damage in this chart. But the twelfth house ruler, the twelfth house does contain the multricone sign for Mercury. So Mercury becomes the most malefic planet. So it would have been good to do the twofold planetary astral remedial measures for her chart when she was young. We want to strengthen the functional benefic planets. For Libra, those are Sun, Moon, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. And then we need to propitiate the planets causing adverse effects, Rahu, Ketu, and Mercury, with Bhuta Yagya and Deva Yagya, charities and chants. Now this is the date of the accident. She actually passed away the next day. She was on life support and her husband took her off life support the following evening. So this is the birth chart, this inner circle. It's this chart. It's just a circular format and the outer circle is the transit chart. And these are the transit degrees. Now take a look at Rahu and Ketu on that day. Look at the degrees. 17 degrees, and they're, they are in odd signs, Gemini and Sagittarius. The odd signs are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. Aries, Gemini, Leo, Libra, Sagittarius, and Aquarius. So Rahu and Ketu. So here's Rahu and Gemini at 17 degrees. So it was sitting right here, and it throws an aspect five houses away, seven houses away, and nine houses away. So Rahu sitting here at 17 degrees was giving an exact 100% affliction to Mercury at 17 degrees, and a very close affliction to K2 at 19 degrees. And this K2 sitting here at 17 degrees in Sagittarius was afflicting this Rahu at 19 degrees. Rahu, unexpected calamities, seventh house of marriage. And this Rahu afflicting this Mercury, ruling the 12th house of hospitalization, end of life, and foreign lands. Most malefic planet. And afflicting K2. So some past life karma. So she was in the moon, Antardash, a sub-period. She was in the Venus main period. Venus has to do with the self. The moon was the operating planet, sub-period ruler. Moon in this chart is well-placed but weak in old age, ruled by Saturn, which is ruled by Jupiter, in the house of accidents 
and death-like experiences. And Saturn, which is Ayush Karaka, significator for longevity, was in the 12th house of end of life. 27 degrees old age, had no power to it. So these are the main points from the chart. For Princess Grace Kelly. Namaste.